Hi everyone, this is Sharan here. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to learn about the art of solving any data science problem. Most people who are interested in learning data science, they learn about the tools and techniques that are required in order to solve a data science problem. If you enroll into a popular data science course, of course, you will learn about the tools, the techniques, all the technology relevant to solve a data science problem. You will learn about all those concepts that are available in order to solve many data science problem. But what many people don't teach you or what many popular courses don't teach you is how to learn the art of solving the data science problem itself. So in this video, I'm going to try to explain you about the art of solving any data science problem using like real life examples by using simple terms as possible. So let's take the customer churn as an example and then go through the different uh, steps that are involved in order to make sure that you learn the art of solving the data science problem itself. So first one that what we are going to see here is problem conceptualization. So this is the first and the most important step in any data science problem. So problems like customer churn can be quite tricky to define. In telecommunication, as an example, customer churn can be quite straightforward. For example, there is someone who is using your service today and tomorrow if that particular person stops using your service, then that particular person is considered as an churned customer. He is no longer using your service. But if we take e-commerce as an example, it can be quite tricky because we can't define who is using and who is not using. You are going to use that e-commerce platform once in a while. So maybe in those cases that defining customer churn can be quite tricky. So maybe we can come up with a definition like customers who have been using your service for at least three times or who have used your platform in order to buy something for at least three times in the past, but they have not used your service for the last six months. So then they can be considered as the churned customers. Even in telecommunication, customer churn can be tricky depending upon like to what level of investigation that we do. Some customers might continue to use your service as seen they, they continue to use their mobile number, the existing mobile number, but they do not use it as their primary mobile number. So then they can also be considered as churn, but it's quite tricky and you need to go through a lot of data in order to identify those customers accurately. You have to go through their historic usage and current usage. And if there is any fall that you are able to see, so then those can be considered as the churned customer. They still use your number. Maybe they will continue to do so for quite some time, but even when they get a chance, they will completely migrate from uh, one service provider to the other service provider. So as I mentioned, the definition of the problem itself is quite tricky. So we need to be very clear about like what and how we are defining. So now you have defined the customer churn, like you have defined your problem. So now how do we approach this particular problem? So in this scenario, the customer churn for telecommunication, this problem can be addressed using multiple ways. For example, you can identify various events that is leading the customers to churn and try to prevent those events from happening. Or what you can do is you can try to build a predictive model that will help to predict all the customers who are likely to churn over the next few days and you can provide them some discounts or provide them better service in order to ensure that those customers do not leave you. Or what you can simply do is you can just simply acquire more new customers and do not care about the customers who are churning. So that your user base will continue to increase and hence maybe you need not worry about those customers who are churning off. So these are all the different approaches that you can take in order to solve the customer churn problem. So what you need to understand here is while solving a data science problem, it is not enough if you are data driven. So data driven is like understanding what the data is saying and then try to solve the problem based on the data. What you need to do is you need to be purpose driven in order to solve the problem. So what is the purpose here? So you need to prevent the customers from churning. Like how do you prevent it? You need to understand what are all the various core reasons that is causing the customers to churn off. And hence, by solving that, what you ensure is you ensure that the customers are more happy and then the churn percentage reduces. If you do not 
solve the core of those problem if you keep on acquiring more new customers like what will happen is you will most likely ending up losing a lot more customers than what you were originally losing and hence it is important to just not be data driven but it is important to be purpose driven in order to solve the problem more efficiently the second topic is having a good understanding about your data landscape so in competitions like tidal what happens is like you are provided the data and you try to build a model or do the analysis based on the data that has been given to you but in a real life scenario no one gives the data to the data science team the data science team needs to understand what kind of data is required to them in order to solve the problem so many people who are trying to learn data science through an online tools or through an degree they try to make use of cadl in order to improve their skills it is of course very good they, they can improve a lot of skills or like or like what kind of models should be used and how to build a better model how to do a better analysis how to do a better feature engineering in order to come up with an efficient solution but what they don't understand is they don't understand that there is a series of steps that are required to be performed in order to reach where we have the data to solve the problem so in many organization like in most organization what happens is the data reside across multiple systems for example if we take customer profile data the customer profile data will be mostly within the uh, uh, crm tool and it will have uh, its own database most likely which will hold the whole lot of customer related information if i take compliance as an example the compliance are more, more more likely to be within the compliance system like usually it's a different kind of an system which supports the customer support team and it's it has its own database it has like all the information related to the customers various technical issues and how they should be how the customer support team can help the customer solve those problems so it's a different it's a different kind of an maybe data altogether if you want to understand what are all the various technical issues that are causing the customers to churn so then maybe you need to uh, work on the lot of the uh, issues data most likely these are all those various issues that has been pushed by the iot devices so in order to solve the customer churn problem so you understand there are so many different data that you need to work on which sits across so many different systems so you need to identify within each system what kind of data is available what kind of data will be useful in order to solve your problem so let's take the customer churn as an example again so depending upon your analysis if you find out the customers are uh, churning due to a bad service or customers are churning due to unsolved compliance customers might be churning because of better discounts offered by the competition customers might be uh, churning maybe because of the uh, better product features offered by the competitions customers might be uh, churning because of various technical issues that they are facing so as you understand there are so many different reasons why the customers can churn so in order to solve this particular problem based on all these understanding you need to uh, you need to work on the customer profile information data you need to work on the customer compliance related data you need to work on the customer usage as well as like a customer bill related data to understand how the usage has been in the past and how the usage changed just before the customer churned churned and you need to understand about the technical issues that are that, that a customer might face so you need to go through the lot of various issues that happened and try to see how th- that is correlated to a customer churn So as you see here the data that you need in order to solve the customer churn problem sits across different source system so what you need to do is you need to make sure that you integrate all these data into an uh, uniform data or into an uh, you need to bring them together in order to solve the customer churn problem So now once you have solved the problem of getting all the data that is required to solve the customer churn uh, issue the third topic is avoiding the bias avoiding bias is a very important topic because if you do not avoid it it will lead to a lot of inaccurate outcome it might lead to discriminatory outcome as well and hence people might lose trust in your solution or in the outcome that you are producing so it is important whatever problem that you are trying to solve it is important to avoid the bias that is that might come up in your solution 
in order to explain about the bias like using simple examples let's take an example from the health setup let's say there is an uh, health company which is trying to build a predictive model to help the customers to come up with a better diet options so now let's say this particular company has trained their model based on people from certain races only they haven't considered people from different races different culture but they have only used data of people from certain races in order to build their predictive model so now if you are going to offer this product to all the people so there might be people coming from different races different culture who have a different diet requirements people who don't eat certain type of certain type of food or who eat only certain types of food so based on all these kinds of scenario your model might not be producing an accurate recommendation to them and hence it is important for you to understand that you need to consider all kinds of people while building your model in order to make sure that it performs well so you would have understand about the problem in the health related use case so now in order to avoid bias like what you can do so what can be done is when you take the sample data you need to make sure that the sample data is representative of the population so you need to make use of the right sample internet in order to make sure the sample accurately uh, represents or most like closely represents the actual population sometimes it might not be it might not be possible to exactly reflect the actual population there might be a lot of outliers too you need to make sure that your sample data is as much closer to the actual population and always when you are building an predictive model you need to make sure that you test the model based on an independent data and you need to make use of a diverse team and you can make use of techniques such as brainstorming while coming up with the approach to solve the problem while coming up with what kinds of data should be considered what type of model should be used what type of techniques should be used in order to solve the problem by making sure that you have a diverse team and you have you use brainstorming it will help to reduce the bias that might get into your model the fourth topic for today is making use of mental models in order to uh, have a structured thinking to solve the data science problem mental models are very popular techniques that are used in order to make sure that you have a clear thinking about a problem so there are a lot of mental models and many of these mental models are used across different stages of the data science problem for example in case of problem definition you can make use of techniques such as the first principles thinking feynman's technique in order to come up with a better understanding about the problem that you are trying to solve in case of data exploration you can make use of mental models such as the first principles thinking second order thinking the top down approach or the bottom up approach in order to come up with a, a better data exploration or the exploration that has considered all the scenarios that could occur in case of data exploration you can make use of techniques such as the first principles thinking the second order thinking the top down approach the bottom up approach in order to make sure that your data exploration has been as exhaustive as possible and again in case of feature engineering you can make use of uh, techniques such as inverse thinking multiple causation in order to come up with a better feature engineering techniques so these are all the different scenarios like uh, different stages of a data science problem and how uh, mental models are used across these different stages in order to come up with a um, better outcome in order to make sure that you are able to have a clear thinking about the problem so as i have explained so the art of solving the data science problem is something that you learn and with experience you gain it so you need to make, you need to ensure that you have enough effort spent in the problem conceptualization you need to have a better understanding about the complete data landscape you need to understand that it is possible for bias to get into our analysis or into our models that we are building and you need to make every effort possible in order to avoid it you should also learn about the mental models that are used across different stages of a data science problem in order to come up with a better solution so all these things that we have learned today are not related to the tools or the technology but these are all very important concepts that is very useful in order to come up with a better solution to your problem i hope you have learned something new today i will meet you again with a new topic bye until then